Hello and welcome to this, the 21st lecture in the series looking at uh, masonry construction. This lecture is going to look at U-values. So when we design a wall, we need to work to standards and have some method of measuring our design work. When it comes to thermal design, the most basic form of measuring performance is by undertaking a U-value calculation as part of initial design work. So this lecture is going to look at what U-value is and the types of information we need to gather in order to complete the calculation. So the purpose of a U-value calculation is to establish how fast heat is lost through a material or a component comprised of different layers of materials. A U-value is a measure of thermal transmittance. It measures the transfer of heat in watts through one meter squared of construction and that's then divided by the difference in temperature. So we write the results as watts per meter squared Kelvin. And better performing walls will lose heat at a slower rate so the lower the U-value, the better the wall is at resisting the passage of heat. So there's a few things we need to know or find out before we can go on and calculate the actual value. We need to know what the conductivity of the material is, sometimes known as the K-value. And it's a measure of how well a material conducts heat. If you think about putting your hand onto a stone surface or a metal surface, it feels cold to the touch. That's because it's conducting heat away from your hand. The inverse of that is resistivity. We need to know what this is. It's a measure of how well a material resists the passage of heat. So it's the opposite of conductivity. And it's measured in meter squared Kelvin over watts. We also need to know what the material thickness is. So the thickness of the material within construction would be measured in meters for the calculation, even though we may deal with it in millimeters. And lastly, we need to think about the direction of heat flow. So this is usually upwards, downwards, or horizontally, depending on the type of element we're trying to measure. We also need to think about surface resistance. And surface resistance can be thought of as a constant value given within the calculation, which relates to the transfer of heat between radiation, convection, and conduction. And there are set values for surface resistance within the calculation. If we are looking at horizontal for a wall or a window, say we have an internal RSI of 0 0.13 and an external RSE of 0 0.04. And we can see that there's similar values for the other heat flow directions. We also have values for the resistance of unventilated air spaces within the construction. And these air spaces are usually referred to as air layers. And there are cavities or other air spaces that extend over the whole area of an element, so it's not just a small pocket of air. And we would give an unventilated air layer treatment as if it were a homogeneous layer with a given thermal resistance, and that thermal resistance would be 0 0.18. But there's a couple of words in there that we haven't really explained. So what does emissivity mean? Emissivity can be thought of very simply as the difference between black and white. So it's the value given to materials based on the ratio of heat emitted compared to a black body on a scale of 0 to 1. So a perfect black surface or object would have an emissivity of 1, and a perfect reflector would have a value of 0. And this comes into play in construction where we have materials like brick, which don't reflect, and we have materials such as aluminium foil, which do reflect. So it's very similar in a way to the notion that black absorbs more heat than white. In construction, if we have low E materials, they're going to make our construction more efficient. So we also have to think about unventilated air spaces, which have low E surfaces. The previous table was for normal emissivity, and we get different values depending on whether they are low E or not. We also have to think about whether there's any ventilated cavities in our design. So that's cavities that have air passing through them for ventilation or for drainage. And our example doesn't have any, so we'll ignore them for just now. But there are different resistances for ventilated air spaces. So if a design that you're working on has a cavity within it, it's a horizontal airflow, we would have, depending on the emissivity, a value of 0 0.13 or 0 0.29. But there's a caveat within that, that all layers between 
the ventilated airspace and the external environment are disregarded. So effectively, a ventilated cavity is taken as being the outside of the building. So once we've worked out all our resistances and we've got all our layers worked out and we know all this information, we can gather that together with our surface resistances, internal and external, and plug it into our calculation. And the calculation for a U value is actually quite simple. U equals one over the sum of all the resistances. And it's easier to put this into a table with your external and internal surface resistances at either end and all the layers layered up with thicknesses, the conductivity and the resistance. But sometimes we have the conductivity and the dimension but not the resistance. So we need to be able to calculate what the resistance is. And that's relatively easy to do. So the resistance equals the dimension of the layer measured in meters over the conductivity. So for some materials that have a variable thickness where the manufacturer hasn't calculated the resistance for you, they will probably give you the conductivity. So once we have that in place, we can plug all those values into our table. Looking back over our sum of U equals one over all the resistances, we can then calculate out the U value. So in conclusion, U values are a useful way of understanding how constructions made from different layers of materials might perform. Undertaking a U-value calculation early in the design process can allow you to make decisions about the thickness of the construction elements. It also allows you to start considering the specification of materials. So aspects you should take from this lecture are that U-value is a measure of the rate of heat loss through an element, that it's measured in watts per meter squared Kelvin, that we need to know conductivity or resistance for each layer, that the depth of each layer in meters is required. If you're doing the calculation on a computer, they tend to work in millimeters. And that emissivity plays a part in creating efficient constructions. Thank you very much for watching. The next lecture will be a worked example where we'll go through and use real values and come out the other side, and then we'll follow that up with one done through a calculator. Okay, if there's any questions, please let me know.